This is Vernika Thomas here with uh, Ashford University in our SOC 313 course. Uh, this is week two's assignment in regards to comparing Brian Finbrenner's ecological theory, the PIE perspective, and the biopsychosocial paradigm. Uh, today is October 3rd, 2014, and we will begin. Okay, we begin with the Brenner's ecological theory. Brenner's theory emphasizes the belief that we must understand a person's experiences both within and between the various levels of the larger ecological system. Reference at Atlas, Fritz Vold, Matthews, and Vinal, 2014. This ecological theory is, consists of five systems. It's microsystems, the mesosystems, exosystems, and chronosystems. But today we're only going to focus on the micro, meso, and macro systems. Okay, when it comes to the microsystems, it is basically the individual and one-on-one -on -one interactions with family, friends, schools, and neighborhoods. This consists of uh, all of the de developments that this person has had in their life, in their household, uh, in their community, with uh, classmates in school, college, neighborhoods, church groups. It doesn't matter all of that combined that helps develop and create the character in an individual. A uh, meso system is the interaction between two or more microsystems, development of learned behavior in various environments such as home, family outings, school, or church. And this is basically uh, a combination of two microsystems, basically a combination of me and the, the neighbor's daughter uh, next door to me. Whatever we use to actually develop a friendship or relationship, actually our uh, interactions with each other, what we've learned uh, coming up in our household. Uh, me coming from a very uh, spiritual background or religious household, and then I have friends that are atheists or agnostic or just, you know, Buddhist. People from different uh, ethnicities, different cultures, but they still are able to make some type of common ground and develop a relationship. Okay, then we have macro systems, and this is the development from larger environmental influences, social class, ethnicity, national and international demographic. Basically, uh, not just the connection between uh, me and my neighbor's uh, daughter or me and my classmates, my connection between uh, me and uh, the world around, the people in um, my neighborhoods, past that, even up to the people in my uh, communities, basically um, college and uh, looking at a federal level or looking at the national, regional level, international level, uh, uh, culture or uh, how would you say, basically society on on a, a social social culture level basically and next we have an ecological model for um, Brian and Brenner's and basically this is consisting of the micro meso exo and the macro system now I have the little arrow with me pointed to directly to the micro system and that consists of of the individual, sex, age, health, etc. Me, how this system, uh, its perspective has played an impact on my uh, life, on my environment. Uh, me being a, a young African American woman. Uh, my health is fair, but looking from the outside influences, from not just the individual, but the micro system, meaning family, uh, growing up in southern states. Uh, we don't eat as healthy as we should. So our family has played a, a big influence on uh, our health too. Uh, school, um, basically everything I've learned up to now 
from high school, from college, my first time being in college, to actually becoming a substitute teacher, uh, getting my uh, degrees in uh, office systems technology and small business management, now actually becoming a massage therapist and coming into contact with my clients. Um, basically, uh, my colleagues, my classmates, all of that combined, my teachers, my instructors, everybody that consists in my little unit there. My peers are my colleagues, my, ca my classmates, everyone that I've ever worked with, all of my co-workers, uh, my neighborhood play area, even though that's a little off base, but uh, as a child, Growing up, that played uh, a big role, a big impact in how I came into contact to develop relationships with my uh, classmates or peers. Then we look at uh, the church groups, my church family, where I attend church services or uh, any church services or church families or church groups I've ever been uh, a part of. All of that has helped influence the development of who I am now. Uh, then we have uh, the meso system, which is basically uh, the connection between me and you. Like I said before, I mentioned before, the micro micro system is co a combination of both uh, uh, two or even more than two uh, micro micro systems. That's what the meso system is combined of. So it's basically what has developed me, and now what has developed you to be the person that you are and how we come into contact and interact with each other and how we express our own differences or our own uh, commonalities in life. And then we have uh, my macro system, and that's the attitudes and ideologies of the culture. It's basically, we have Jacksonville or Florida, Southern U.S. or America, and as I mentioned before, uh, this is basically the socio-culture uh, or ethnic classes of, you know, regions of the state or the county, basically on a, na a national level, federal level, all of those outside influences that have helped mold the community or society that we have today in our country, whether it's in our county, whether it's in our city or our town, everything that has helped influence that environment that we grew up in or that environment that we now call home. And then next we have the PIE, Person in Environment Perspective. This perspective is based on the notion that an individual and his or her behavior cannot be understood adequately without consideration of the various aspects of that individual's environment, whether social, political, familial, temporal, spiritual, economic, and physical. Uh, reference at Condrat 2014. Then we have the person in environment concepts is manifested in the dual aspirations of the profession to provide personal care and further social justice. A reference wise gal, gal uh, 2008. And basically this is geared towards uh, individuals who are in need of the profession of social workers. It is for those who are uh, feeding the hungry and providing shelter for homelessness and advocating for, you know, the weak and needy, maybe uh, counseling the distressed and depressed and protecting children's and women's rights, you know, empowering victims and referencing those victims for the best uh, practices for treatment, such as domestic uh, violence abuse for women or men. Then we have... Um, uh, we can basically in challenge uh, discrimination for dis disabled workers, you know, uh, seeking justice for them because, you know, they might be disabled in certain areas, but if they still feel that they're able to function properly, then why shouldn't they have a chance to? And actually also informing, you know, the government on reform on different issues in, in life or in politics or in uh, communities. Basically, just making changes for the better. And then we have the biopsychosocial paradigm. This is the perspective that posits a more holistic approach to modern medicine by taking into consideration not only biological factors, but psychological and so 
sociological factors as well. Reference at Alex, Atlas, Fritz, Fold, Matthews, and Vinal, 2014. Here we have the overlapping of the biological, social, and psychological uh, influences in the individual's life. And in the very center, we have mental health. So we start from there. What matters most, or the core of a person, is basically how they truly are able to function properly as a human being uh, in this world. So and what they have developed is basically played a big role on their mental health and without adequate mental health or uh, mental health and wellness then you can you can guarantee that this person isn't going to properly function as a normal you know human being does okay so we look at family relationships and trauma there could be a uh, a family that or an individual that that had to deal with uh family members like my my co-worker or manager she actually had to deal with growing up in a household with her grandma because of the fact that she uh had to witness her own uh, father murder her mom he shot her cold-blooded right before her and now that has played a big influence on the men that she gets herself involved with and then we look at the drug effects how people use certain substances to uh, basically uh, cover their mental health or heal them. They find that as a solution to ha help their mental health and well-being, uh, whether it's alcohol abuse or drugs. Uh, we have crystal meth and everything going on now in this world, but all of that plays a big role in mental health. And then we have temperament and IQ. Uh, how smart or how wise or how educated, how knowledgeable are this are these people or are it, are, is this individual, you know, smart enough to be able to take care of themselves? Then we look at the biological influences, physical health, disability, genetic vulnerabilities. Me personally, I have to deal with the fact that you know I have been experiencing symptoms of arthritis. So rheumatoid arthritis is something that's genetic. I'm vulnerable to that, so I have to deal with why or how uh, I'm going to be able to take care of this or handle this, basically going to the psychological, how am I going to cope with this because I'm a very active person and I use my hands and joints a lot, so how do I cope with that? What's my coping mechanism for it? Uh, social it comes back to peers and family circumstances. Um, Growing up in low-income neighborhoods or low-income houses, we can be growing up in wealthy income houses or households and still have some type of uh, some type of problem that could actually uh, affect you psychologically, socially, or biologically. It doesn't matter. There's no uh, there's no um, exceptions to the rule when it comes to that. So then we go to comparing each perspective's impact on environment. The Broff and Brenner's theory is associated with categorizing development through various systems, while the Pi perspective is associated with how social issues are handled from communal standards. And we look at the biopsychosocial method impact on an individual's environment can be viewed from the biological, social, and psychological perspective. Uh, basically, once again, we mentioned the biopsychosocial method uh, encompasses both holistic and reductionist approaches. They intertwine the con conventional and complementary approaches to how to find a deeper meaning or find the core of why, in in the healthcare perspective, how and why some illnesses exist in uh, certain individuals or certain environments. Uh, one example I have was uh, celebrities. Look at how we see the prevalence of death by drug overdose or suicide. I remember one of my favorite actors named Chris Farley. He died from an uh, overdose, and he was one of the funniest animated men around. And then we have Kurt Cobain, mega rock star from Nirvana. He died from suicide. Whitney Houston from overdose. Michael Jackson, drug overdose. Robin Williams, even though he suffered from Parkinson's disease, he died from uh, some type of form of suicide. So we have to just look at things from the uh, perspective of how, how this really does affect, how this affects our lives. And this is how I can.